Big data is, as a matter of fact, the symptom of a more important underlying phenomenon. The fact that nowadays anybody can post something on the web, an opinion, an image, or any other type of data or content. For instance, a customer can say something positive or negative about a commercial product on a forum. I have friends who post pictures on f of food on Instagram, and many of my students are heavily chatting and exchanging ideas, pictures and jokes on Twitter or Tumblr. All this data is actually called UGC, User Generated Content, and since this data is no longer generated by a single company, but by any individual using devices such as a computer, tablets, smartphones, or even since recently smartwatches or Google Glasses, this data has a volume, a velocity, and a variety never seen in the past. As a matter of fact, uh, I do believe that big data is a tsunami that will cause a revolution on a way of seeing the world and doing business. And that has already started to impact our lives. And when you see the new technologies, like the Internet of Things, for instance, where it won't be only humans communicating via devices, but when these devices will themselves start communicating between each other, it looks like we're only seeing the beginning of this revolution. There is not a commonly used or academic definition of this data, but the most often used definition is the four Vs or the five Vs, volume, variety, velocity, uh, veracity, and eventually value. So it's characteristics of the data. I would give my own definition, which is a bit different. You can take the V, which is a summary of all these Vs, but I would say that very important is what I call the VIP. V stands for all these Vs. The I stands for the uh, institutionalizing the decision that we take from this data and peace the, and peace the pertinence, the relevance of what we can draw from, uh, from this data. We are talking about uh, now uh, unstructured, uh, unstructured uh, data uh, as opposed uh, to uh, traditional uh, structured uh, databases. Uh, so the challenge for businesses is really to, uh, to, to, to store, to process and to, to, to organize and to analyze uh, large amounts of data. I would say that we should move the focus from the amount of data being available uh, and there being available because nowadays uh, it's no more uh, indeed the problem of uh, collecting data. Most often they are auto-generated by customers, by clients, by companies, by people tweeting on Facebook and so forth so on. So social networks do play an important role there. So uh, rather than focusing on the definition and their availability, I would say that it's very important to focus on how we analyze them, how we refine them, how we draw information from them. And this is where statistics and technologies do play a very important role so as to make us move uh, from uh, uh, the availability of data to action. There is a major shift in the mindset uh, between the type of data we had before and big data that we try to approach nowadays. Before the data was generated by the company and so it was easy to work with it because uh, well we knew the format, we knew how it was generated and so we totally controlled the content of this data. Nowadays as I explained before, the uh, data is generated by the users. And so, uh, this is typically what you call unstructured data. When people are talking about what they think about the product, it's not easy to analyze systematically, automatically this data because uh, it's totally unstructured. People say, can say anything using pictures or even uh, sometimes they record themselves uh, in a video uh, on YouTube. So from a company perspective now, it's very difficult to analyze this data in a systematic and automated way as they are used to. When exploiting the, these huge masses of data that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that are available, uh, is uh, taking into account ethical and legal issues related to confidentiality, related to privacy, and it's not only related to uh, diffusing uh, information drawn from this data, it's also a matter of using this data for a purpose that is not necessarily related for the purpose uh, for which this data have been, uh, have been collected. The most important leap that business should do is to move from knowing something to understanding. And this leap from knowing to understanding is where uh, big data can indeed play a very important role, but with the opportunity there are threads that come with. So I would say nowadays uh, we know that there are uh, uh, quintillion data being produced uh, every year. 
90% of the data that are available have been produced over the past couple of years. And uh, there are estimates that say that about a dozen millions of dollars are being invested in this domain between now and 2015. So behind big data, there is big value. And I would say that the major uh, uh, thread for a business is to make the needed uh, organizational and cultural change to seize the opportunity. Uh, because the, 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 the opportunity that is there is that uh, what nowadays can actually represent something that for some other companies is noise in this data, if properly analyzed for your own company it may represent data and information. It's no more a matter of uh, identifying specific patterns, but it's more a matter of identifying departure from patterns. So it means very specific information that is specific to you, not just because you have specific data different from others, but you are better able to contextualize this data and you are better able to uh, refine them. The big data uh, market uh, looks very attractive. Uh, it's a large and growing market. Uh, according to analysts, uh, the big data market is estimated to 17 billion dollars worldwide in uh, 2013 and it is also expected to grow uh, up to 50 billion uh, dollars in uh, 2016 so it means that it's very attractive for uh, different players uh, but uh, the big data market is also very complex uh, competitive you've got uh, players uh, coming from a traditional data mining and uh, business analysis uh, activities, but you've got also some pure uh, IT uh, information technology players uh, like IBM, like HP, like Oracle, and you've got also some uh, telecommunication operators uh, entering into the market. So it makes uh, things very uh, complex, but also very attractive. And in order to be uh, well positioned on the market, you've got to, 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 to develop some, some skills, uh, both to, to process data and also to understand the data to make a value uh, out of it. Research shows that using business analytics and big data makes you more efficient. By taking data-driven decisions, you will be more effective and your actions will be more impactful. For instance, uh, studies show that the effect of your marketing actions can be between 10 and 33% more profitable if you use the right data, the right technology, and the right methods. And as a matter of fact, from a more general perspective now, it has been demonstrated that business analytics-driven companies are systematically more efficient than the companies that do not rely on these approaches. We are looking for new uh, data analytics techniques and obviously the companies cannot make it all by themselves. So it's an obvious need to, to, to work with searchers. There are, I would say, some commercial searchers from, 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 from marketing companies. But beyond this, we need to go further and to, 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 to go towards the, the, the latest and state-of-the-art uh, research. And for this reason, I think that it's, it's, it's really uh, key to make some agreements with, with, with universities and academic research. Companies, businesses uh, have to reach very short-term uh, objectives uh, with limited time and resources and not necessarily uh, enough time and resources to develop uh, state-of-the-art uh, business analytics techniques. So uh, a cooperation, collaboration with academics is key. In a business school, I think it's our mission to focus on relevant and practical business issues when designing your research questions. Consequently, even if this approach was not always systematic in the past, I think that researchers and practitioners should not definitively see eye to eye and work hand in hand. It's a journey that we have to take, but on the long run, it will certainly be beneficial for everybody. For researchers, it ensures that we are working on relevant questions and that we can study real data and making our research more valid. For practitioners now, it guarantees the independence of the concept, the rigor of the approach and that the proposed solution is state of the art. It's very relevant that uh, a statistician and all the people who work in uh, data science try to uh, convince themselves that they need to come out from their comfort zone. So it's not only a matter of adapting uh, the classical statistical methods 
to a new domain and to a new sites of data sets. It's a matter of changing the way we do statistics. It's a matter of focusing on different things. It's a matter of moving from statistical methods to algorithms. It's a matter of moving uh, eventually from a classical statistical hard modeling to soft modeling. It's a matter of giving uh, a, a much higher relevance to visualization in order to make uh, discoveries. So in this uh, perspective, uh, getting out of the comfort zone also means to work at the beginning of the process uh, hand in hand, uh, people from the academia with people from the professional world, so as to provide the scientific developments that do meet, do meet the uh, requirements from the professionals. I believe that it's very important that in companies there is uh, what I call a cultural change. It means recruiting people that do have this broad view. It's not just a matter of being technicians, statisticians. It's a matter of knowing technologies, of having a methodological background. It's a matter also of communicating properly what you discover from your data. So that's what I like to call a data scientist, which is, uh, which is a profile that, of course, before being recruited, it's something that we need to create. Uh, and I think that this is where a business school uh, like ESSEC can play a very important role because it's a place where we can merge uh, solid competencies in different domains, both uh, technical, statistical, and uh, marketing communication related. And by merging all these competencies from different departments, help training people that do satisfy these needs, uh, these needs in a company. Mm -hmm.